Hello and welcome to Hotspur Way Season 1 Episode 14 and we're calling this one Flange and the reason why we're calling it Flange is, Ross, over to you. The bit round the bottom of a con... No. <laughs> but it is right, the, 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 the ribs yeah. on a condom are a flange because, and I'm going to click here so you will hear it, I'll read it to you, a flange is a protecting flat rim or <laughs> collar or rib on an object, so that is the ribs on, on a condom. But on all seriousness, five minutes ago, Tottenham Hotspur were delighted to announce that Johan Lange has been appointed technical director with effect from the 1st of November 2023. Lange will have responsibility for recruitment, analytics and talent identification across our senior and academy teams. Ooh. So Breaking news. So, we've got Johnny Flange. And he's uh, Johnny Flange. He's forty-three. Means I'm older than him. You know, you know when you're getting old, right? When you're actually far older than the footballers, and you're also coming up to the age where the average of most managers. And I mean, Johnny Flange, twenty-second November, nineteen seventy-nine. He'll be forty-four soon. Do you remember the nostalgia when players that were born in the year two thousand was a thing? Now it's just the norm. Yeah. That's what got me. Oh. So let's let's talk about let's talk about good old Johnny. He's uh, so he's been at Aston Villa as a global director of football development. That's a mouthful. And well, he's got a flange, right? So what else? Anything interesting? Wikipedia hasn't actually been updated. Should we update it? Should I change I... it to Johnny Flange? And see what happens. What else? Nothing. I mean, there's not much on him. No, it's no. We're in for the. His parents are Jacob, Jacob, and Brigitte Holmberg Pedersen. Are you related? No, my last name's Jacob. So his first, his dad's first name is Jacob. No, it's a stretch. Percy, you you said something, but clearly you're in your kitchen again. We couldn't hear it. I'm literally not. I'm in. I'm by my desk. I've set it all back up. I've not been very well. Oh yeah, how are you, by the way? You got man flu, which we all know to all men is fatal. I I wish. I'll be honest. I wish it was man flu. I felt. Oh, you don't want to wish that on anyone, mate. It was horrendous. Um, no, I contracted COVID. It was not very nice. Um. And I was bed bound for the most of the week. I'm, I feel like I'm back. I haven't got it anymore, which is good because these little tests told me I haven't got it anymore. Um, but yeah, no, I wasn't very well all week. Um, but I'm good. I'm back. Okay. Well, let, let's talk about Flange. I mean, I'm glad you're back. So, what do we know? What does Wikipedia tell us? This is great podcasting because no one else can actually give you this, this, you know, this research. So on the 5th of January 2013, so over 10 years ago, following a poor results, which left Wolves 18th in the championship and an FA Cup defeat to (laughs) non-league Luton Town. We'll get onto them in a minute. Yeah. Um, Stolbacken. Why is he talking about Stolbacken? I don't know. Because he was assistant manager to Stahl Stolbacken. So they were... uh, Copenhagen. Yeah, they were all sacked. And since then, he's done some transitional roles. I'm reading here. This is really interesting. He's been at Aston Villa, with that mouthful of a title. And he was... Ah, so he was responsible for the signings of Emmy Martinez, Matty Cash. Can't stand Cash. Mm-hmm. Bertrand Triore, Ollie Watkins, Morgan Sanson. I don't know who he is. As well as Ross Barkley. Well, we got to see clips of him, didn't we? So, can you see any of these signings coming to us? I mean, Ollie Watkins, I would love him at Spurs. I think he would score an absolute hatful with Madison and Sonny providing. Um, no, nah. I don't really see it like that. I think what, what, what you've got... This, uh, t- technical directors don't necessarily... They're, they're much more about process and stuff, if I'm right in saying, in the way that they operate. Um, so, they're not necessarily like director of footballs where it's all about the recruitment side of things. I think they'll oversee. I don't, I'll be honest, I, I'm, it sounds like I'm waffling, probably because I am, but let's be honest, I haven't got a clue who this fella is. Listen, is it, if it's the right person for the right for the right role, then great. I, that's really all I can put with it. I mean, look, you, you hear Ange, Flange. Oh, do you get it? Lange, Ange. Oh, there you go. 
So that's 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 oh. the link. Right? But you hear Anne saying that every sign that comes in, he gives the final approval, which which is the way it has to be, right? I mean, we've spoken about this before. And so, Perch, I think you're right. I think that what this guy's going to do is just set up a lot of the processes. And what have you? Basically, Spurs are becoming an admin club. The signing of gonna have, uh, have to do and... things right though, right? I think we've been doing things wrong for so long now. I know. Tell we me about need that. to oh, start doing I'm... things. Do things right I'm going to miss Paratici. Do you think really? he's going to go? Do you think he's going to go? He's gone. I don't want him to. Oh, I do. He's so much he, fun. Really? He and he, he's lot of, he a lot is. of his signings have worked. A lot of his signings has but, worked. But they, they've, they've worked. But, but let's be... They, they, they've only worked <laughs> now because of the manager that we've well, got. I they mean, didn't work when... They, they didn't really work well, that's for not the his, managers that they That's signed. not his fault, is it? I mean, yeah. I'll of course it is his fault. He signed players for managers that didn't work for them. Does that make sense? It does, but do you know what makes better sense? Like, I'm finishing off Ross's sentences. Ross, what are you yeah. doing tonight, mate? I might order a kebab again. I don't know what it is about this podcast. That's not where I, think I was it's going What is it with you? That's not, that's not I where don't I was going know, with this line Perch. of questioning. I mean, I was trying to ask it's a you Monday out. Monday night. Like, that's a Saturday evening. Like, after a few beers. Yeah, like, but... Like, like, look, you're going on a Monday night. Like, come on. The first thing is, I don't drink. So maybe it's after a few Pepsi Maxes. For any sponsors <laughs> listening. And my son's around most weekends at the minute because the football season's kicking off. And I, he doesn't He doesn't like... Uh, if it's not... Chicken McNuggets or pasta or chips. He's just having a bit of a moan at the minute. So, I think the Monday is like a release. But speaking of releases, Lange has obviously been released by. See how I've turned. See how I've intertwined that. He's been released by Villa, and we've class. snapped him up. Well, we're but, not signing no, until par- the first of November. It looks like so he's not signing. Yeah, well, we're not doing month. much till then, are we? It's not as if we can sign True. anyone. No, it's about sixteen True. international breaks, right? Until then, it's oh, oh ridiculous. Don't get, don't get me started. How and why is South Korea called up Son? Go on, Perch, go on, Perch. He's a captain. No, 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 right? ignore that. How have we played eight Premier League games and we've had two international breaks? Sorry, uh, so this is my little rant that I want. Like, listen, I don't go for care. it, mate. Like, what, what, go for it. Why do we need so many? We've got another one in November, by the way. There's another one oh, in for November. For fuck's like it's literally going to be every four games of football. There's another two weeks off. It's like what the hell? Like no one cares. Like it's crap. Like listen, I'm not like even with some playing in two friendlies. Like who cares? Like they're friendlies, right? Like I, I just I don't get it. Combine them. I'd, do you know what? I'd actually wouldn't be against having three weeks off, but having one international break done. Get it all done in one in one long week, two weeks or whatever it is, and get it done. Well, like, they... It's ridiculous. The idea I had was you could scrap all the friend, the international breaks in the season that you just said, condense the league a little bit with filling in the gaps, and then have all your international at the end of the season. Is it a problem this. solved? Yeah, I'd be, I wouldn't be against that. But didn't we mention this? It was one of these masterclasses that we came up with, which no one listened to. We said this, right? That Probably. we should have like a... I'm sure we did. I think I said it. That we should have like a transfer... I mean, a, an international window. But wasn't that what they were supposed to do? I remember this like 10 years ago where they said that they were going to have like this international window where it was going to be like a, um, some sort of, it was going to be done in the winter break or something. Oh, I can't remember. It was so why long can't, ago. Why can't, why can't they do it as if it's, uh, this, uh, this is the problem. There's so many games of football now. Like this, the, and I, I, I talk about it now in the context of a football player, like literally like where there is no football season anymore. Football players no, play there isn't. football all year round now. Like, Players like look at like to use James Madison as an example. Like he's now going to play for England, then he's going to come back, and then what? At the end of the year, then we've got another tournament because it's the Euros, right? And it's like, are we? Is it just going to be this constant cycle of football? And it's like, like maybe I'm just like I'm miss just when it would like maybe it's. Do you know what? It's because I actually enjoy watching us play football. Is why I care. I think. If this, if we had to do Conte in George Charge, I'd be like, do you know what? I'm, I'd I would have been an England it. fan. Yeah. <laughs> I, I say that though. Watching football under Gareth Southgate is equally mind numbing. Like, it, like, like Harry style, Maguire yeah. could play for Forest Green Rovers and he'd still get selected. Like, it's ridiculous. Well, the thing but, is, let's, let's talk about Madison, mate. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, but you, you were so yeah, right. You were so right that Madison now, who who needs a rest, it's clear that he needs a rest. Sonny needs a rest. Right, Sonny's their captain, fair enough. Do you know what I mean? He's, he's, their, he's their godsend, and that's understandable. I mean, if you actually speak to South Korean 
uh, people who are, who are big in football, they they worship the guy. They he's massive over there, right? So that's fair enough. But Madison's going to go to England. He's going to probably play on the left once more in a boring, boring England team. You know what's worse? Mm. We have to wait until Monday, the twenty third of October, to see Fulham, mm. and then the next fixture after that is Friday on the twenty seventh. Yeah, 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 we yeah we play then, like Monday then Friday, then, don't we? Yeah, then we and then and then isn't it the Monday after we play as well, don't we? Not the yeah. literally two days after bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six but of November. Days. Yeah, so six but, of November. So have to wait for I that. Think, yeah, I was gonna say we play like two games in October or something stupid like that. Or whatever, three, or two, or three and games. Three sorry, and yeah. three in but then November. We play seven in December, by the way. We play seven. I'm looking. Three. I'm looking at it now, and that is crazy. That is, and that's not including. Is that that's not including the FA Cup? So that's eight games. I th- uh, yeah, no, the FA Cup game will be wasn't playing in December. Well, plays in that'll January. Be January. Oh, you're yeah, right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah, sorry, but but we have a is, mental December. We do, and mm. but look at this, right? So we play, we play as we said, Chelsea on the sixth of November, eleventh of November, Wolves at, uh, away, and then we have to we play again two weeks after that on the twenty fifth against Villa. Oh, it's rubbish. It's rubbish. But you know what? Because Flange played his last game being in the management squad was against non-league Luton. We have to talk about Luton. What did you not think? Uh, Perch, you seem to be up for it today. And you, you sat near um, your microphone, which is all right. What did you think about the game, mate? I thought, again, a striker that can't score goals in the first sort of five minutes is terrifying. What's the point? I mean, you've got... How is he missing sitters? Like, the... Like, I know we all talk about it and stuff, but Richarlison keeps missing sitters. Like, they're, like I'll be like Porro, by the way, equally, he misses a sitter, but I'll give him a little bit of a benefit of the doubt going. He's not he's not a striker, right? But, but in context, all three, we could have been, we should have been 3 0 up in seven minutes, and it's all but game over, right? Like, people sort of saying how many, not what the score lot on who's winning, how many are we winning by. Um,. And then the game cotton have opened out and the Spurs were poor. I don't I think we were really, really poor against Luton and we got away with one. I thought Basuma had probably one of the worst games I've seen him play for Tottenham. First a terrible half where he got sent off. Diving, silly. What are you like what are you doing? You don't need to dive. Like, keep yourself on the pitch. Yeah, you've got booked, you're gonna miss the next game anyway. You're now gonna miss the next game and then potentially get another book in once you come back against Palace and then miss the Chelsea game. So it, it's, it, we got away with one. But I feel like we're saying that a lot at the moment. We're getting away with it at the moment. Like, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's not sustainable. I'm worried. Like, I thought we were, I thought we, we had, we ran out of ideas very, very quickly. And no disrespect to Luton, we shouldn't, we should be beating them, like, comfortably. But Luton, to their credit, dug in. I thought Luton had very, very good opportunities and probably if they had a, better, better player up front. I think they go and probably nick it. But it is what it is. We get a clean sheet. We win away from home again. Um, but we just need to we need to play a lot better. Um, I think we're sat at the top of the table, yeah. But I think it's going to sort of peter out, unfortunately, unless we start making a bit better opportunity, taking the opportunities that we do have. Um, and we try and get to January as quick as possible and recruit better. We need... Big time recruitment in January. We're Ro- struggling for that Ross, side of things. Ross, you know, you know how yeah. the rhetoric right now is. Can we? I think that Perchie started the "we can't" movement. It's just like that. It's just we can't. It's not. No, no, no. It's That's not what it sounds can't. like, mate. You sound like <laughs> no, you're no, about no, you're no, a death no, no, I mean, you no, just no, got it's like Gary Neville. No, but it, no, but it's not that we can't. But I, 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 I sit and live in the sort of realism, realism side of things, and look at and going. Are Tottenham sustainably going to go and win a league with like this? No. As I, I, I sit back and I go, the second we lost Basuma in midfield, bear in mind we're playing Luton Town, potentially one of the worst teams in the league. No disrespect to them, by the way, because I, I thought they were really, really good against us. But like we, the second you lose Basuma in that midfield, we looked all over the shop. Like we didn't know what to do. Like it was. We then get out. We got outplayed for parts of that game by Luton Town. Like I thought, Van der Ven, his goal was very, very clever. The way he took his goal, I thought, fair play to him. Same with Romero. Again, with Vicario was probably the best player on the pitch for us. I mean, he made some really, really important saves that 
salvaged us really but I just, I get really, really worried with it that we get him very, very carried away very, very quickly and then we're going to hit with a real real realisation bubble that's just going to blow up in our face and everyone's going to go, oh, I ju I ju maybe I'm just premonising like disaster that potentially could happen. It's a coping mechanism of all Spurs fans. Well, can I just, I need to say something. Perch, you sat down. Yeah, I've been sat down this whole way, mate. Go, go lie down for this one. I thought that we played quite well. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Let's let's take a look at the WhatsApp group, at the Hotspur Wait WhatsApp group, because this was happening live during the game. And where is it? Here we go. So it was quite funny. I won't read out everything. But you started off, um, where did you say? So, and this is exactly why we're never in a title race. Shocking half. And I, I wrote, I'm still loving the way we play. Maybe it's I'm a bit older. I don't know. I, I still love the way that we look to go forward. I remember just well, a few months ago. Me, mate, though, really. Do you remember Newcastle? Do you remember last season? And I, I, look, I just think in life you have to look at some of the, some of the finer points, instead of yeah. just just looking at you know that I understand where you're coming from I do, but I I thought that we played prof professionally oh what's the word professionally profession professionally professionally that's the word <laughs> <laughs> and I I've just done a flange but I I thought that we we did well and. I mean, if Bissouma would have got sent off, the best time was for him to get sent off right on the stroke of half time because then we can regroup. And yeah, I mean, look, just because they're Luton Town doesn't mean that they haven't got right to be there. Like, I, I hope that we never have to play them again because the, the viewing angles of that game, honestly, there was there was points where I went to, I thought I had a VR headset on. And it was like, oh, no, no, I'm actually not in yeah, the game. Yeah, you did mean... Yeah, I, this, I, did, it, I, sort of got, I did get your point on that point. On right. That bit, but and, but I, I just... I don't know. I'm just trying to find the, the good parts of it. And and there were good parts of it. No, the good the good part of it is is we won a game of football by not playing very well. I mean, that's, that in itself is a good thing. Isn't like, that I'm what champions do? Isn't, isn't that the rhetoric? Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, but the rhetoric... Yeah, but this is where I feel like the rhetoric on that. Yeah, good... Champions do it, winning badly, but I feel like we haven't been amazing for a for a while. I don't think we've, I don't think we've been absolutely playing teams out of our skin for like like we did at the foot of the beginning of the season. Like I think it's, I think we've had a real struggle. I thought we we would look good in the second half against Arsenal. I thought we were really good. I thought Liverpool really showed a lot of weakness. What we can do against teams with low blocks, as as you could argue with Sheffield United, but Luton as well, very similarly. But I thought Luton was slightly different. But yeah, no, we need, but we need to start dominating games now. We need to get back to... Listen, I'm not saying that it can't happen, by the way. Maybe the international break is actually not a bad time for us to get a few players back from injury. I think that's the key bit in that whole thing. I think um, we, 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 we miss... We hope, hopefully, maybe Benton Court can be coming back soon. I think we could do with someone like him in midfield that can offer a little bit of something else. I wasn't a massive advocate, I thought, of changing it. But actually, I think, do you know what? We may need to start just changing the midfield slightly. Um, just offer something a little bit different. But, yeah, I just I just worry, like, because, yeah, listen, it's one of those, right? It, this is the way I look at it. If, if, for example, we keep doing this and we're still winning games of football and we're getting to the back end of January and we sign three or four players and then you go, OK, now let's see how we bounce on to the second half of the season, right? Listen, if we're having this conversation in April and we're still top of the league, but not playing out of our skins, I go, do you know what? It is what it is. We're there because we've, we're we just getting away with victories and stuff, but we're in October, right? Well, I'm going to read you some a few things that I got from the game. And Ross, you can answer this one. So okay. we, we had a whole half where we had 10 men against their 11. We were playing away in a really tight-knit ground where... When I say that not just the fans are on top of you, but the TV watching audience around the world were on top of the players as well. And in that half, we had 67% possession. We had more corners and there, more shots. 
we should have we should have scored three goals in that from what I what the notes I've taken. I can't actually remember which three opportunities they were, but we should have scored three goals I've written down here. And we still won. So yeah, I understand that the eye test can say, yeah, but we're not this and we're not that. But Ross, what do you think? So I've just rolled off some stats. Compared to what you were watching. Um we we got to stop expecting these teams just to roll over and die when we play them. They're, they're not there for that. They're going to put up a fight. And I always get the feeling that when teams like Luton, Bournemouth, and just the teams down at the bottom and Burnley, they probably look at Tottenham before this season starts and think maybe out of the big teams, that could be the one that we cause the biggest shock in. And that's just the mentality thing. I also think that Richie's problems and scoring... I don't know. I, maybe he's still re- reeling from the events that have happened in, in, in his personal life. Um, we're missing Johnson, Solomon, a fully fit heel. Um, and there's probably one more and I can't think of it. Ah, I don't know. I don't, ben Tancor, who could chip in with a few. And we've still got Four of our back five, if you include the goalkeeper, who've never played... Oh, no, three, who've never played in the Premier League before this season. So we're bedding in all over, and there's going to be ups and downs. And the fact that we came away with a victory, it just means it's three points the other day. We're never, I, I'm not going to look back at this game and go, God, we really scraped that one, didn't we? If we win, we win. We move on. And it's an international break. It was key that we won. We won. We move on. I mean, there's other teams in whole die straight so I don't think we played that badly um, and after we went down to 10 men they are going to attack they are allowed to attack I thought they're finishing on Luton's team they they couldn't find hit water if they fell out of a boat I think at most stages of the game um, so uh, it, it it was coming because we added some pressure onto them and, I've, and we had like three corners in a row and the third one quick thinking by Decky lovely little pass to Madison great turn and then flip the pass to Van Der Ven, 1-0. It was a, it was and a then... great goal. It really yeah, goal. I thought it was. It I thought it was. Thought really... it was. And not much, is, not much is... I've listened to quite a few podcasts since then. There's not many people talking about the goal. I thought it was a great goal. Perch, what do you think, mate? Didn't that liven you up? It did. So I remember your, your chat no, on the group. No, no, no. It's a thought, great I thought goal. goal. I, I said it earlier. I just said it earlier. I thought the goal was really, really well done. Well worked. Clever. Yet again, I, I say this on this pod every single week. Everything good about Tottenham goes to James Madison. Everything good about this club goes through that man. He's the reason why we win games of football at the moment. That's why I'm worried. That 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 is my worry. Like I love the fact how good he is, but my worry is is you don't have James Madison in your team, and we don't seem to create much. And that that worries me that our our dependencies are on one player. Like and listen, I thought we I thought we got we got the job done. It was one of the it's. It's one of those games I categorise as you take the three points, but you don't talk about it after or anymore, really. You move on from it, right? I think it's very much that category of you don't look... I'm not going to sit back and watch the highlights of that game again because we, it wasn't a great spectacle when it comes to it. But no, I think, listen, it, it, it's three points. I think that's the best thing about it. I think you can talk about it in that context. But I, I stand by my, my, my concerns, really. My concerns are very much... Real realizing on the way that we are sh- struggling is the wrong word, but I just we made we made that Luton Town team look better than they should have been. I think that's a worrying for, bit for me. We made that we we looked people. You're watching that game and going, they're in this game here. Luton are in this game, and that shouldn't be the case. No disrespect to them, we're a much better football team than they are. So what, yeah, I don't think. Yeah, gone, I, I think Basuma getting. I think Basuma getting sent off didn't help. Um, I think if he stayed on the pitch, I didn't think he was. I didn't think he was good at all. The game really, like even even up until no, he got I thought he was it one wasn't, of his poorer games. To be honest, I think mentally I like as well. When you've got, I love him to. I love him to bits. To be fair, I think he's quality. Oh yeah, he just had a brain fart. I saw. He just yeah. it happens. But Jonathan <laughs> Pierce. I, I don't know if you two would have heard it, but Jonathan Pierce on match of the day. When Basuma's walking off, it was like a cry from Game of Thrones. It's like, shame, 
shame, shame. <laughs> it felt like that as this guy's walking off and the camera pans to him with all the fans giving him the send off. And it's just like, all right, calm down. Worst things have happened. Um, but I think because of that sending off and the fact that it was in central midfield, we've had to alter the way we play. And the best thing about it was once we scored, 10 minutes after that, we were starting to get outdone on the wings. And she just went to a back three. Perfect. Sorted that out. And a real credit goes to Ange. The one player I really want to give a shout out to is um, uh, Kulazewski. He worked his Swedish meatballs off that game. He ran and ran and ran. He played left. He played right wing, left wing, behind the front man, up top and on his own. And at one point, there was he had the ball and there was like five defenders around him. And the nearest person to him was Ben Davies. So he he ran his socks off that lad and I think he needs he deserves a lot of credit for that game because he held the ball up really well and he did a lot of the things that Richarlison's struggling to do at the minute. We'll talk about Richarlison in a bit. I know that Percy's done his best to, to destroy the guy and you know we'll we'll talk about it in a minute. But what one is it destroy that's harsh. One, 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 so so two things that happen well one question mate for you Ross is in those Swedish meatballs are they for my kit and do they contain horse? That's the first thing. And the second thing that I saw, which I was quite surprised at what Ange did, and I couldn't understand it at the time, was that he, their biggest threats were down the wings. So he did go to a back three, but then he, he basically had, instead of um, the inverted fullbacks, he then made sure that they were doubling up. And that was a, that was a great tactic. So they couldn't really get through. And you know what? At the end of the day, we won, and it was a professional performance. And now it's time to to bash Richarlison. So I want to just say something on this. <laughs> I I met a lovely chap. I'm in Cyprus at the moment. I met a lovely chap called Marius. I was wearing the Spurs, the new Spurs away kit, the uh, the blue one. And I walked into my to my local cafe where I work from there sometimes, and uh, I like to have a shisha there. It's called Monderno, basically. Greek way of saying modern cafe so it's you know it's really hip not really it's full of old men but this guy as I walked in he said come on you Spurs and I turned to him and I said well you're a Spurs fan and he said yeah yeah he, you know I, I, I was there when we won the double he didn't look like he was 104 and so I said to him what 61 60 he said yeah yeah I was I was there I was 12 when we did it oh goodness me and so he sat down with me and and what we were talking about and this is what was interesting where, where Mario, he said to me, the thing with Richarlison is, and this was the kicker, he's not a Spurs player. He said, yeah, he did well at Everton, but he's the type of player that's a grafter. You know, someone, and he was right, and I, I could see then Richarlison under a Sean Dyche, under a David Moyes, and he would be fantastic. I really believe that he would be fantastic, but is he that flair? Does he have that flair and that creativity to fit into this team? I mean, I don't know. Only he can answer that. And of course, yeah, we have to we have to caveat that with he has had some problems in his personal life and we, we take that into account, obviously. But I don't think that he's suited and I think I'm going to have to die on the he's not a Spurs player heel. I really, and again, you know, this is one of those moments where you go, oh, I really hope I'm wrong. And I do. I want every Spurs player to succeed. I'm never going to hammer him for it, by the way. Never. You know, he, he wears he, he wears our shirt and I support my club. I'll never hammer him for it, but do I believe that he'll that he'll go and be great? No. I think I've lost my fifty pounds to to purchase charity because I said he would get fifteen goals he scored two, I think, so far. So what do you think, guys? Do you think he is a Spurs player? And do you know what I mean when I say Spurs player? You should know, right? You know what I'm talking about. Ross you especially. Yeah, I, I he's He's not in what people would consider a traditional Spurs player where it's flair and a real attacking mentality. He does have a attacking mentality because he's a forward, but it's becoming harder and harder to defend the lad. And it's not, and do you know what? It's not his fault. He, I think he was bought on the premise that it would add more attacking potency if Kane was injured at the time and um, we wouldn't have to rely on Son so much. But from day one, it just felt like Conte didn't want him. And I think it... And it was, it was like that with a few signings. I mean, we, we've seen what's happened with Spence and so forth. But um, 
I, with Richarlison, it is getting, as I said, he, he comes across as the nicest guy in the world. But nice doesn't always get you, you know, Premier Leagues or FA Cups and things like that all the time. So maybe it is a... Maybe it is time just to say, right, if you're not doing it by the end of the season, we may have to move you on, fella, because we can't keep relying on him for hustle and bustle and all that. But yeah, we do need something else with a bit. Of, but we've got Johnson to come back, and we do keep forgetting this. Um, and maybe if Johnson has a flyer for a few games, it might just kick Richie up the bum a bit and tune him in. But... I think what perchie has been saying since the beginning of the season might bear fruit, which is a shame. Yeah, I mean, but look, there are some players that have that quality. I just don't think he has the quality that we think he has. And maybe the fact that we had Harry Kane for so long, it's not fair on the guy. But I think he's suffering from Perisic's injury as well, because both his goals yeah, have come definitely. from a Perisic corner. So... But you can't just rely on one person being in the team just to give you a load of goals, so or provide you for the chances. But we don't play that way either, by the way. Ange doesn't no, play. Doesn't. Ange doesn't play with. Do you know what I mean? Perch, you, you're eking he, to say he something. He can't play with his feet. He can score goals with his head. But he can't. He can't do anything with his feet. His touch is awful. He can't finish two yard tap ins. I mean, he had two of them yesterday. Uh, two of them on uh, Saturday. I just, I've been saying all along, and people have been saying oh, I'm negative about it. I'm not saying you guys, just said people in general on all different platforms and stuff. And I just said, look, do I want him to do well? Yeah, because it benefits Tottenham. But we can't have players on the pitch that we're having to carry over the line every single week. And unfortunately, he's like, he's that player. Like, you could put, like, like what was it? it is there any difference between Richarlison and um, Morris, who plays up top for Luton? Because I didn't see much difference. I, 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 and I genuinely mean that. I don't. When people sit there, I, if if Richarlison wasn't Brazil playing for Brazil, I don't think anyone would be anywhere near giving him the time of day that he gets at the moment. People would be all over getting him out a long, long time ago. All right. So let me ask this question. So I'm a bit shocked at what I've just found. You remember that, so guys, away from the keyboards, I don't want you Googling this. In the season that Richarlison helped Everton stay up, he played 30 games. How many goals did he get? Remember when everyone said that he was the main reason, one of the main reasons why they stayed up. How many goals did Richarlison get? 12? No. Perch, over to you. Well, how many goals? What's his highest goal tally? Goal. Yeah, I mean, that's what it normally means. 12, so. 12, no, um, no. 14, 14, <laughs> sorry, no, it's 14. No, it's not. I'm going lower, I'm going to say 7. 10. 10 oh, yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah, 10. Oh, oh yeah. no, and I put a £50 bet on that we get 15. But I said this, but, but, but everyone... I should have done my whenever, research. If, when, when everyone, I, everyone at the time was saying it, I said, but he, going, oh, I've had I, people, look... Not just you, people are saying, oh, he'll get 20 goals in the league this season. I'm like, based on what? Oh, well, he's playing with... But no, I mean, the guy barely scores anyway. Like I said, you look at his scoring record, it's not very good. And I said, I said he might, I said, I said he'd chip in, I said he'd chip in with anywhere up to about eight, eight or nine, I said he'd get this season in the league. He might, he might get a few lucky tap-ins at the back post or a couple of headers here and there. But, but this is the concern, right? Like, and, you know when I was saying weeks ago, and I was saying about the way that we're playing now, we're not relying on one player. We're relying on everyone chipping in with goals. If your if your number nine isn't chipping in with fifteen goals, like you need to change it up, right? Like the goal tally I think you'll get this season is about eight or nine, right? That's the sort of goal tally I expect from the likes of a Solomon or a Johnson, maybe coming into his first season into the club, not a. Uh, a year in pre- a pl- Premier League player that's been in years and stuff, he should be scoring a lot more as a number nine as a striker, right? That 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 that's the bit that worries me. Like he doesn't get enough goals, I, I, and I'll, and I'll say this now: I don't know what he does. I genuinely don't know what Richardson does for me to go. Do you know what? I do. At least I can see what he does. Like because you know this. Can I tell you what he does? Can I tell you what he does? 
he he hires the best fucking agents the world has ever seen yep. because <laughs> I'm just reading here. Do you know how many goals? So he moved from Watford to Everton for thirty five million pounds when thirty five million pounds was a was roughly I would say in today's in today's money how much sixty five seventy million. Yeah. Would you say that? You know how many goals he got for Watford in 38 league matches? Six. Um, I want to say 14. So you've said 14 and and Ross, you've said six. You six. Said. You got five. Yeah. And he yeah. went for 35 million. And then, and then Everton in one, two, three, four seasons where, I mean, he played 30, 34, 36, 35. His highest return was 13 league goals. Do you, do you, and we spent know, 50 is, million pounds plus 10 but, million according to transfer market on but, on on his transfer but this is this is the point right and this is what i say all along when everyone everyone really hates me for saying it and i don't care i said if you're tottenham now you sell as quick as you can because right now you still could get a big fee for him a relative fee 40 to 45 million pounds what are you talking about? Why for it? Hold on, I'll read. I'll read it to you again. No, no, in thirty-eight no, 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 league no, no, no. games, he went for me, thirty-five million yeah. pounds, five goals. We can get one hundred and twenty for him. <laughs> let me speak. Let me speak. My point being is, is right now with someone like a Richarlison, you can still get money for him. The problem what Tottenham done in the past is with these sort of players, they sit around for too long. If I if if I'm Tottenham in January, I'm selling Richarlison as quick as I can. Because you'll get clubs in Saudi Arabia that will want someone like a Richarlison. Because he's Brazil's number nine, he's easily marketable. Get him over there, he's awful, goodbye. And then spend the money on an Ivan Tony or whoever you go and doesn't matter, he's just the first name into my head. But you go and sign a striker of that ilk that can go and get you goals. And you go, do you know what? We're done with that, we're in with the new. But if we can't sit around too long with this fella, don't care what anyone says, you can't sit around with him too long on your books. Because the longer and longer he's still at the club, the more and more his value depreciates and it tanks. Saudi Arabians like Brazilians, though, don't they? But that's what I mean. Like the, he's he's marketable, right? Like the Saudi Arabians are trying to market, so he he's the sort yeah. of player that they can go in and market. We just signed Brazil's number nine. Great, go and have him. Take him off our books yeah, for 40, 50 million quid. Done, done. And, and we then, move but, on with it. And then with Flange, we go and get Ollie Watkins. Because he knows him. I, I mean, I'd be... No, I'd be Ross amazing. Barkley. I'd, I'd, I'd love an Ollie Watkins, but I don't see it. I think Ivan Tony's the realistic striker we can get in at the moment. No, I think he's going to go Arsenal. You heard what he said, right? Yeah. You heard what he said about So? Him. So? Whoa. Who cares what they want... say? I don't, I don't really... No, but I think I Ange, I think, I think Ange cares. No, no, but he was 13. There's a very big difference, or 15. What about Matt Doherty? Look at this. That was so before Ange po- joined. No, no. no you, but I'm just, Ange is all about the character, mate. He's not. I promise you, he ain't going to sign I, someone I, who's I, saying you know stuff what? like that. I, I like Ivan Tony's character. I, I, I like the fact that he stands up and says it how it is. Like, I hate football players that just pussyfoot around and don't really say it as it is. He says it. This, he, he's not shy from what he's done. He knows he's made a mistake. But I'd rather someone like that than have someone that just. Like, I don't know, pussyfoots oh. around. Just I want someone that's direct with it. Listen, Tony's exactly the character we need at Tottenham right now. He's not a troublemaker, is he? Let's be honest. He isn't well, a I don't I, I don't know. Daniel Levy said he doesn't want anything to do with betting sponsorships. And Ivan Tony said, I've been a Liverpool fan my whole life, but from young, I've liked Arsenal. I've liked watching no, he, no, Arsenal. He said, no, one minute, one no, minute. He said, he said I like One minute, one minute. I'm, I, let me get to the kicker. This is the funniest bit. I've liked watching... No, I'm reading a direct quote. I've liked watching Arsenal and how they play, and this is the best bit, and how passionate their fans are. What? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to do a double one of those, Claxons? Oh, I, 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 there's something about Ivan Tony with his the world's against me type attitude as well. It's a bit of a, it's just a bit of a stinker for me. I, I'd rather go down a. I don't even really think Ollie Watkins is the right one, and I'm trying to scratch my brain to think of one, and it's really hard because I Sonny's turned himself get. into. A, you've got to remember, Sonny's turned himself into a beautiful number nine. That guy can finish, and we've also got Jamie Donnelly, who is looking bloody good. And if he was at any other club. People would be clamouring for him to be on the bench to get a few minutes. But for some reason at Spurs, we go, no, we're going to loan them out and then we won't play them. 
but I, I would love I'd rather go almost go down that route than bring in someone like Ivan Tony who is, has this whole kind of oh the world hates me you know the the, the FA are against me so and so's against me I I understand what you mean Perch about a strong mentality but there's a strong mentality and then there's what I perceive to be a bit of uh, what's the word I'm looking for um, where you think everything's against you I've forgotten what it is. Uh, um, siege, siege, mentality. siege mentality. No, 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 no. It's not. It's not imposter syndrome, for God's sake. Um, it's when you. Th- it's when you're feeling hurt, but you blame everyone else. I forgot what the word is, but if anyone can just DM me. Um, I would. I would rather have a strong. I would rather have someone who is. I don't know. A bit more lighter. I know what you mean. You don't want someone that's a bit of a yes person, but. Look at James Madison. He's he's come in and he's right behind the club. I don't think Ivan Tony would be like that. And we need more Madisons than we do need Tonys. I agree. So I want to talk about Pete Haynes for a bit. Did any of you know him? Not personally, no. but through. I didn't know, but I heard he's. I know I heard a lot about this guy. So, so Pete Haynes, the, the first time I ever um, heard about him was when he was on the Spurs show, on that, on that podcast. Um, I speak to Theo Delaney, not, I wouldn't say quite a bit, but, you know, follow each other on Twitter and speak to each other. And so I follow his, his pod and he was on there. And obviously, um, I speak to Vas Coney, if any of you know his VCon one on, on X. Yeah, I know Vas, yeah. Yeah, hopefully he'll be on in the show and Samuel as well from Doctor Doctor Tottenham Podcast. Uh, lovely guys. And I didn't ever meet Pete Haynes, but when it was coming to the end and you know, we all thought that he he had maybe he had maybe um got past pancreatic cancer that he had and then it came back and and you know, took his life and from what everyone says, this guy was someone who was there for any Spurs fan. And I wish I could go back and speak to the guy. I'd only speak so many times on mm. different podcasts and whatever. And and even the club came out and said something about him, you know, the trusted. And there's been so much love. And what I like about this, obviously love to the family and, and condolences, but what I like about this is that we're seeing a lot of love given to not just the players and to the manager, but we're also seeing it given to fans who have given everything to this club. And Pete Haynes, we salute you, wherever you are. And I, I just really hope now that we win the league for Pete. You know, even though I never met this guy, even I, I don't want people saying oh, I'm bandwagging. It's not. It really touched me. You know, when it happened, and it was like, uh, so I reached out to, to Vass, and and it really, you know, it it's weird because I never met him, but it really hit me and. I hope that we go on and we smash the league for Pete because from what everyone says he was such a lovely lovely person I just sorry James just to jump in but um, a lady who follows me and um, she's written a book called The Biography of Tottenham Hotspur Julie Welch she's written a lovely yeah she wrote a lovely obituary in The Guardian today and I've just you know I read it yeah I read it earlier on and some Pete, and I didn't realise anything about Peter. I don't know him. I've never met him or spoken to him. I think I tweeted him a couple of times, say I hope you get well and all that. But you know, he did a lot for the Tottenham Food Bank. He was a regular at um, White Hart Lane, and even someone like Steve Perryman was saying good words about him. So it, the only thing I can say, and I mean, I'm in no, in no position to say anything about Peter because I didn't know him. But he just, when enough people start saying good things about one person you know that he was a great person and my condolences to the family and I do you know hopefully at our next home game which I think is the Fulham game something is done by the club because I think he deserves it he sounds like a wonderful man with a heart of gold and you just can't ask for more from humans than that yeah just completely down to earth if, if you haven't heard um, Thea Delaney's Life Goals podcast there, there was a two-parter which he did with Pete Haynes a good few months ago. And I advise you to go and listen to that because you, you, you get to, I mean, Theo does it within uh, Pete's house and his wife and his dog are there. And and it's great to to hear this man and what he's done, for not just for the club, but for the supporters of this club. He never put himself first. 
And I think we need more fans that are like that. So when Ivan Tony talks about Arsenal fans, he can fuck right off because we have the best fans in the league. Guys, is that it? Have we covered everything? We've been going, I mean, this is a really short one, 45 minutes. We've got no preview. That's the problem, apart from Gareth Southgate picking Harry Maguire and Calvin Phillips, which is really peeing me off. Um, but Does Calvin Phillips play football? There's a documentary on Prime about him doing something at Leeds and then reaching his summit at Man City and then Pep telling me he's fat. But I don't know. There's nothing really... Oh, one thing I did want to bring up was um, Pierre Hoiberg. I think he's still going to go in January or end of the season. But his his arc is starting just to turn back into his favour a little bit. And I think there's a little bit of small sprouts of love for him. I think he got I think he got pigeonholed by the previous I say I don't want to include Nuno because that was only a sneeze. But I think he got pigeonholed by the previous managers, Conte and Maguire um Mourinho as the imagine Maguire managing Tottenham. <laughs> <laughs> well oh, don't when he wins us our third Champions League in a row, I'll be laughing. Um but he got pigeonholed, I think, as this kind of Danish Viking. And I think he's a lot more to his game, more in an attacking sense than a defensive one. And I'm hoping with Ange, because he might have to start against um, Fulham, I hope we see, start seeing the best of him. And, you know, if he does go, he does go. But I remember when he joined, I was very happy. But as I said, I think Mourinho and Conte ran it, especially Conte ran him into the ground. I mean, he, I think he played every single game last season and I think his legs started falling off. I'm not saying that he's Basuma levels of um, football skill, but I think he can add something to the team and I think it can be in a positive way. This is just a different player. We, we shouldn't compare him to to Eve Basuma, do you know what I mean? Just different players. I thought he did, I did a good job when he came on. I was a bit uh, what's the word like? He when we won against Liverpool, when Matt, Matt scored that that lovely goal for us at the end, he didn't come out to celebrate. I don't know if he was injured, but at Luton Town he did. He was there with the players and he was celebrating. And he has a role to play. Does he does he want to be there as second fiddle, which he is? Let's face it. No, he doesn't. You know, how old is he now? Is he twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, and so if he can go somewhere and get his first team football, when he can feel, he can feel loved again. I'm pretty sure that there is love for him, you know, within within Hotspur Way. There is, I'm not talking about the podcast, I'm about the training ground. But I just, I understand where him wanting to get away comes from. You know, I I played every minute of every game for the last few seasons, and all of a sudden it's like I'm, I've been tossed to the curb, and the fans aren't on my side and he must feel like shit sometimes and I understand it you know we're all human beings and believe it or not Premier League footballers are human beings <gasps> so I think that's where what we'll do you think it. Perch oh go on Perch yeah is he still with um, us yeah Perch. I'm here Look, I think I think Hoybier, yeah he's a very one dimensional style player in the way that he plays I think it's just it is what it is he's not you're not you're not going to go out there and get X, Y, and Z over him, but yeah, I think he he will help us out until we get to, till we finally does go. I think you're right; he will be sold um, in January. But listen, I think he'll be there. I think the reason when we say, but he's got into people's good books and stuff like that. I think it's more the sense of we knew what he was going to be, what he's all about, right? It's all about hard work, and I think the one thing you can't turn against him. Listen, I'm not his biggest fan, but at least he does work hard, right, for the team, and that's that's what you want. Like he could have easily sat there and sulked and said, "Oh, if I'm not playing in the team, then I'm not going to bother working hard." Blah blah blah. Like he did, he was one of those that came out and said, "No, no, no, it doesn't matter. It is what it is, but I'll still work for the team," sort of thing. So you can't really go against it on that. Um, just look, just like our performance against Luton, he puts in a professional shift, you know. So right before we go, we have and we've said this from the beginning. We've we've always had a strategy at Hotspur Way. Where right now have we're we? doing, we have, yeah. We've okay. been doing one podcast a week, but we have been approached, can't really say by who. We can't, can we? No, we can't. Not so yet. we've been approached and we've been asked to do more podcasts. Now, what does that mean? It means more content, more fantastic content. Oh, 
I'm not trying to big myself up. You know what I mean, right? It means more content coming your way about Spurs. It means like us doing it. We absolutely love it. But the problem with doing more content means that and I'm not, we're not about to ask for money, by the way. And it's, I just realised it sounds like we're about to ask people for money. We're not at all. What it does mean is that we might, well, not might, we will need to beef up the Hotspur Way squad. Uh, Ross and Perchy, I think you put something out there. I think the, our, our Twitter account did as well. Yeah. If you've got a good mic and you can sit closer to it than Perchy can and you want... <laughs> Amazing. You would, you would like to be on the show just dm us at hotspur way show on x twitter and leave us a voice note and just say my name's so and so i want to be on for this reason and we'll add you to the squad and we're going to start beefing up the squad now we've had a few message us already which is great so that's the first thing we wanted to say so let's beef up the squad and let's have you on and the second thing is we would really like some reviews. We're not getting enough, nowhere near enough. And we're getting quite a few listeners now listening. So all you have to do is on your app, just hit the five stars if you liked it, if you didn't, fair enough. And send us in your questions. So I think that's it, unless you've got anything else to say. Perch, you got anything coming up on your on your channel? Um, Not sure, it's international break, so not much is really gonna happen, but um, there'll be some more content coming out soon. I'm back feeling a bit better now so i'll be able to bring more stuff out definitely cool any plugs for hotspur way on your show uh, uh just just wait and see i have something coming up there's something coming up oh you're gonna plug the show perfect are you gonna Maybe. tell people to watch it or listen to it or is that uh, i will tell people to listen to it don't worry oh, oh, good. Honestly, this joke's now gone way over it's not the really top. a joke i mean it's factual but there you go. <laughs> 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 all right percy say goodbye mate uh, goodbye mate Ross. James. Boys. <laughs> Bye. Bye.